All right, guys, welcome back to another episode here on Grow the Earth. And today we're going to talk about 10 things you should be growing in your garden. Now, these are things that I believe that would be good for a beginning gardener to grow because a lot of these things are very simple to grow. They don't require a lot of pest control and they continue to do well in our Texas heat down here. All right, guys, so our very first thing, and this is something that anybody can grow. And I mean anybody can grow. This is something that you're probably already growing and you're not even a gardener yet. And what that is, it's weeds. I probably grow more weeds in this garden than anything else that I, that I even produce. They are the easiest thing to grow and they are a constant battle to keep in check. Uh, so if you've if you got a black thumb, guarantee you can still grow weeds. All right guys, so actual, our first thing that I think that any gardener can grow is going to be okra. Now, the reason that this plant is first is because number one, this thing tolerates the heat like nobody's business. The hotter it gets down here in Texas, the better these things grow. Um, I don't even think someone with a black thumb could kill these plants. Uh, number two is they only have one kind of pest that it really messes with them and that's going to be ants. And one of the most popular videos on my channel by far is about how to keep those ants from bothering your plants. And in that video, and I'll link it right over here, is going to give you the specific thing that I use to keep these ants off my plants and keep them from hurting up my okra. Thirdly is these plants are going to produce a ton. These are going to grow all the way from the early summer uh, all the way into the fall before they start dying off, before the cold starts killing them. And they're going to produce a ton of vegetables. Uh, also, one thing to note about okra is, is do not plant these things too early. They really love heat and anything below like 60 degrees or so at night, they're going to slow down and almost stop growing at that temperature. They love heat and anything less than like 60 degrees at night, they're not going to do so well with. So let's move on to our second thing. All right, guys, so our second thing that you should be growing at, that are, is easy to grow and I would recommend for a beginning gardener is beans. Now right here in this bed, we have green beans, we have purple beans, and we have wax beans. And I'm going to tell you what, these things grow and grow and grow. As you can see, this is just a monster of plants behind me. And every couple of days, you can pick a whole basket full of beans off of these plants here. Um, number one is they, again, they tolerate the heat very well. These plants are probably going to peter out and stop producing long before they die from heat. Uh, number two, there's not a lot of pests that, that mess with these things. All right, guys, third thing is going to be carrots. Now there's gonna be quite a few root vegetables in this video because root vegetables seem to always do well for us. And uh, I, they don't have a lot of natural kind of predators per se, a lot of bugs that mess with them. But especially carrots, you're looking at the fact of, well, number one, you can start these earlier in the spring and they will pretty much be finished up before summer gets here and starts getting really hot, number one. Uh, number two, again, not a lot of bugs that mess with these things. And number three, the actual part that you want to eat is below ground, so that helps a lot with your pest also. So this is definitely something, uh, along with the next three things, that I would definitely uh, tell a beginning gardener to grow. All right, guys, so the fourth thing that is going to be really easy to grow, especially for you beginning gardeners, is going to be beets. And uh, also, this is going to go along with our next thing, which is going to be radishes, which actually we don't have any growing this year uh, because we kind of ran out of bed space. But beets and radishes are going to kind of go together in the fact of they're both, you know, uh, a root vegetable that is uh, going to grow really well for you. Uh, we actually, uh, we're actually growing this one underneath a trellis with our green beans and with our Korean melons. And... They really don't mind the shade too much. It actually is probably helping them just a little bit as we start warming up here in the summer. The good thing about your, your beets and your radishes also is they are a very quick to mature crop. 
Uh, most of these plants are done within 90 days. So if you plant them in early spring, by the time summer's getting here, you can harvest some of these plants and be ready to go. And if you have a trellis like this that is shading them, you can even succession plant another crop right behind them. Uh, there's not a lot of pests that really bother them. And also, again, their, their bulbs are either right close to the ground or barely above the ground. And they're gonna grow really well for you all the way up and into, including, you can grow these things year round if you want because they also do well in the fall. And in the winter time, well, here in Texas anyway, in 9B where I'm at. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna talk about is potatoes. And potatoes are probably the, the set it and forget it kind of vegetable. Uh, you get you some good decent soil some so, uh, that's got some sulfur in it and you put these things down about five to six inches and you can pretty much forget about them. Uh, most times with it being down four, five to six inches the rain is going to be enough water to keep these things going unless you just have an extreme drought you know you need to water them once a week at most. You do have the potato beetle but we don't really deal with them too much down here and they are going to grow and produce for you and you're not going to have to do a lot of hard work to do it. You know, the most you may have to do is after they start growing to about this point is you've got to put a little bit of hay down there to shield the potatoes. But if you've got them planted out like we do here, you've got enough shade from just the plant to where you don't have to worry about that. And the best part about the potatoes is, is they're going to let you know when it's time to harvest them because this is going to die off. When this di starts dying off, that's when it's time to harvest your potatoes. So they're set it, forget it. You don't have many pests you're gonna, that you're going to mess with. And they actually tell you when they're done. It's one of the easiest things in the world to grow. And depending on your climate, you can almost grow potatoes year round. All right, guys. So our next thing, and this is probably, again, one of the easier things to grow in a garden and would be perfect for a beginning garden is going to be peppers. Now, this is going to include quite a bit different of varieties, pretty much anything that you would call a pepper, which is a bell pepper, a sweet pepper, a jalapeno, a chile, uh, you know, pick your variety. They're an easy plant to grow. Uh, not only that, uh, heat doesn't affect them as much as you would think, and they're going to grow, and once they get about yay tall, when they start producing, they're going to produce more than you can just more than you can pick and they will produce right up and until the frost kills them. So especially you guys up north that have a slower growing season, once these things get going, you'll harvest all the way up until they get killed by the, by the snow that comes in. And they will continue to do that up and again until the snow kills them. All right guys, so our eighth and ninth thing are gonna be onion and garlic. Now these kind of serve a dual purpose. Not only can you grow and eat these things and they store for a long time, but also they serve a dual purpose in your garden as in the fact of the smell of these actually drives away pests. And it also masks the smell of your other vegetables in the garden that are more prone to pests. So when you plant these around your garden, not only are you gonna gain the purpose of the fact that you can eat these, but also, your more uh, pest prone uh, produce is going to be protected by them because they're going to mask the smell and drive away those pests that are, you know, that are, are uh, doing damage to your garden. Uh, the next thing is, again, no pests are going to bother them, so that's a plus. And lastly, they, uh, they grow really well in the time period that they're supposed to grow. Now that's all going to depend on your, your zone and where you're actually located at, but we're actually kind of growing these out of the natural season for us to, just to see what would happen. Uh, and secondly, if we, don't make a, a, uh, if we don't make a harvest of these vegetables, we don't have to worry because we can clip the greens and eat those. And two, we're mostly using these to see how much pest protection we can get by just using these instead of our natural things that we use around here. All right, now our 10th thing is going to be eggplant. Now these come in different varieties. This is actually a small uh, white variety, but they also come in a, like a fingerling purple. They come in the large purple ones. They come in 
the round white ones. I mean, just a variety of different eggplant that they that you can grow. But again, too, there's not a lot of pests that are going to bother these. They're going to produce hardly for you, believe me. Once these things really get growing, they're producing. Right now, there's probably 20 blooms on this plant right now, and they're going to produce and produce and produce for you. Um, and they tolerate the heat pretty well. And again, not a lot of care involved in growing these plants. Now, I still have one more thing, but I'm going to introduce it as a kind of an alternate or a kind of a bonus. All right, guys, so the last thing is going to be watermelon. Now, the only reason I didn't include this in the regular part was because they take up so much room that I know a lot of gardeners don't have the space to let these things grow. And if you're growing them in a confined space, you've really got to keep tabs on them and keep them trimmed and keep a watch over them to make sure that you get produce and they just don't take over everything. Again, not a lot of pests that, that go after these things and you get big wonderful watermelon whenever it's all done with. So guys, again, this is the 10 things that I would suggest that everyone should grow and especially a beginning gardener. And I thank you for watching with me today. I'm gonna to ask you to like and subscribe and share and all those great things. And as always, I ask you to pray over your garden, pray over your family, and have a great day.